Good morning from Port Aventura Park where it's time for my day two vlog. Now if you haven't already, check out yesterday's video. Had an awesome time getting back here to Port Aventura World in Spain. Got on the seven different roller coasters including Shambhala, Dragon Khan, Stampeda, a night ride on Furious Baco and of course went on Hurricane Condor as well. The huge Intamin drop tower that they've got here. Watched an amazing show yesterday and I'm also going to be watching Bang Bang West today which is another one of the shows here at the park. Along with that, going to get back on Furious Backo first thing this morning. The key is get here nice and early, get straight on Backo, and you won't have to wait too long. So I'm going to have a little ride on there first and take you guys along for a daytime POV because let's face it, we couldn't really see a lot last night. I watched it back when I got to the hotel. And it was quite a dark POV, but you know what? It shows just how dark and how awesome that ride is at night. Like you can just see nothing when you're going around the layout until you come over this uh, final section of the ride. Along with that, going to uh, get on the water rides today. They've got four really big water rides at this park. Park. So I'm going to try and get all of those in today because it's absolutely baking this morning. We had a bit of rain yesterday. Originally it was saying there might be storms again today, but I've just checked the weather forecast and I think we're going to be all good for the weather. So uh, come and join me here for day two at Port Aventura Park. We're going to start off with a nice ride on Furious Baco. This time you might actually see something. Let's go and get on this Interving Wind Coaster. Well, I had a lovely front row ride last night in the dark. Don't think I'm going to be quite as lucky this time because I'm on the back row for a bit of shake, rattle and roll as we like to say here at Beanball Worldwide. Furious back eight, furious back pain, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Don't worry, it's a back row but I'm on the inside seat. Time to wake me up. That was not too bad at all. I feel like they've done something to that ride. Like that wasn't riding too bad. I know I wasn't on the outer wing seat, but that was all right. Furious back row, back row. Furious back pain is no more. Well, that was a really nice wake up call. A back row ride on Furious back row. Saying that, it was definitely nowhere near as rough as it normally is, especially on the back row, even for an inner seat. So yeah, that was uh, pleasantly surprising, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, to start to show you this lovely view here, of course, it's pretty stunning, isn't it? With Furious Baco in the Mediterranean themed area, and then over in the backdrop there, the tallest and fastest roller coaster in Europe, Red Force, over in Ferrari Land. And I'm gonna be visiting Ferrari Land tomorrow, so stay tuned for that vlog. It'll be coming up next here on Theme Park Worldwide. Well, it's only 10 o'clock and it's absolutely baking hot, so I think it's time for a water ride, don't you? I'm gonna head around this way into Far West. And we're gonna get on the Grand Canyon Rapids. I absolutely love Far West here at Port Aventura. It's a great themed area and it's home to the Grand Canyon Rapids, even though I can't see any boats at the moment. Oh, there we go, they're all coming up the lift hill over there. Um, here we go, we're gonna join the queue for the Grand Canyon Rapids. Nice water ride, didn't go on any yesterday. Real focus on just getting the coasters in. Of course, it's been a very busy park. And looking at this queue for the Rapids, it's also pretty busy down here in the Cattle Pain queue, but at least it's undercover. So I'm gonna go and take you along for a nice ride on the Rapids. I'm sure we'll uh, end up in with somebody on the boats. Get a nice bit of uh, rapids interaction, bit of mega wave, shall we? That's what we want. Here we go then for a trip down the treacherous Red River. Here we go, looking forward to this. How wet are we gonna get? <laughs> In a nice boat. Here we go. Oh, oh. Do like all the theming on there. Straight into it. No messing on this rapids. Oh. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, in terms of the queue, waited about 15 minutes this morning. Not too bad. Lots of express coming down. Oh, I like the uh, train track up there. Nice little uh, piece of theming. Yeah, you never know when you're <laughs> gonna get wet on this one. <laughs> Whoa, hey. It feels like loads of speed, this thing goes. Wish Charlotte was here with me for this one. <laughs> well, I wish she was here for all the rides, but definitely for the rapids. Whoa! Oh, yeah. 
Oh, there we go. Oh, quite a bit of weight in the boat, so I'm hoping we might get some good splashes. Here we go down this main run now in the Grand Canyon. But yeah, it's all nicely themed, all the trough, all the rock work. Waterfall. Oh, oh God, here we go. Oh, it's a nice day for it. Here we go, here comes the mega wave. Oh! We're alright so far, not too bad. Well, like I said, I thought we were quite a bit of weight in. We might have got some big splashes. Oh! oh. oh. Well, there we go. Near the end of the ride. Yeah, it's a quick one. It's a long layout, but... Yeah, it's uh, quite a, a quick ride. Yeah, it builds up a lot of speed as you're going around on there. There's normally a water squirter down here at the end as well, so we've managed to escape quite lightly there. I don't think we will be on some of the other uh, rides later on. Tatuki Splash, you can't really escape that one. We're going to get the big... Uh, is the water jet coming? No. Is it coming? Oh! oh. oh. Hey! Oh. Oh. Lovely! Like a B&Q hose pipe. Nice That's ride on the Grand Canyon Rapids. Lovely! <laughs> Oh, it really is one of the best views ever in a theme park, isn't it? Especially if you love B&M coasters. Oh, listen to that roar of Dragon Khan. Yeah, just had an awesome ride. Over on the Grand Canyon Rapids. Yeah, really enjoyed getting on a water ride here at Port Aventura Park. And the family who I went on there with were lovely. Like when we were coming up the lift at the end, they were asking about the YouTube channel, uh, which I thought was really nice. Oh, here comes Shambhala. Here we go. Get ready for that drop. Can't wait to get back on old Shammy B again later on. With how the queues are looking, I think I might be going for it with the express passes. We'll have to see. But I thought I'm going to come down here first and have a ride on Angkor. Wow. Oh, honestly, what a beauty. Love this area around the back here of the park. But yeah, I thought I'd come down to Angkor. It's the ride that a lot of people tend to forget about. So I've never really waited a long time for this. It's a Mack Ride Splash Battle. And yeah, it's not a bad ride. It's an absolutely huge splash battle. It goes on and on. And with it being a nice hot day, I thought, well, let's come down here to the back. Walked past the Tuki Splash, and of course, that's really busy. Um, same with the Silver River Flume over in Far West, so I'll save them for later. And uh, of course, Sesame Street Street Mission, the dark ride, I'll be getting on there at some point. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be getting some Express, I think, today. Um, it's needed. I mean, I don't like getting Express, and you know my thoughts on it. I don't agree with fast track systems at parks. I just feel like everyone should be able to queue up and have a nice ride. And that's the good thing with places like Europa Park, you know. Um, like there's no paid fast track. Well, it's literally less than a five minute wait for Angle, and I'm quite glad to be honest, because look, I've got to wear these little uh, gloves to go on. <laughs> this is quite funny, like, literally this member of staff was just in the queue, handing them out, and was like, yeah, you've got to uh, put your gloves on. There you go, giving them out for everybody. See, so, yeah, I've got my gloves. Let's go on this splash battle. Can't say I've ever been on one of these with uh, plastic gloves on before. <laughs> Well, here we go then, on Angkor. And I got my gloves on for that added protection. Here we go. <laughs> oh, crazy. But yeah, it's a nicely themed ride, this. However, again, there's no audio working. Like, there seems to be a major audio issue around a lot of Port Aventura, uh, which is a shame because it really does add to the themed experience of this park. Look at that view of Shambhala. Oh, it is incredible. I'll take you for a little walk along the pathway at the top just here in a minute. Oh, this is the worst feeling ever, this is. Uh, like, I was wearing these gloves. Uh, like, in such, like, horrible, sticky weather as well. There we go. But, um, yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? Big snake just over there. Nice uh, little animatronic. Oh, I'm getting squirted from the other side. Here we go, we got a bit of a battle. Let's, uh, can we get him? Oh! <laughs> I don't mind riding a splash battle in this weather. It's when you're at Alton Towers and it's about nine degrees Celsius. And yeah, it's a freezing cold, like Scarefest night. That's when you don't want to ride a splash battle. But yeah, here at Port Venturi, you don't mind. This is crazy, honestly. Like, look at it. It's so horrible and sticky. Bear in mind, it's like nearly 30 degrees Celsius here today. Right? <laughs> so funny. Yeah, look at them views. That nice big hill there on Shambhala. The first massive camelback. Oh, I love it. It's more about the theme in than the actual ride for this, in my opinion nice little effects around there is some targets that you can hit for effects to go off as well it's quite nice 
Oh, Shambhala again, honestly. I just love it with this little village here and the coaster as the backdrop. There's some gorgeous theming at this park. I've not really been inside my favourite themed area that much yet. Of course, far west, not had a walk up by the saloon or anything yet. So, going to be doing that today. Whee! <laughs> Uh-oh, here we go again. Oh, let's lower that gun a bit. That's it. Ah, oh, I messed that one up. Yeah. <laughs> ah, uh, the gun's on me. Oh, the gun's on me. It's really good. Love it. Now, there is a large bucket here just hanging off the bridge. But it only lets out a little bit of water. <laughs> Most of the water's coming from that side. Should we get the back of them? Oh, Shambhala again. I tell you what, like the operations have been pretty good in terms of, you know, getting the train sent out. Other than Furious Backo, I'd say. You know, Backo, that's not been great. But everything else has been, uh, been all right. Here we go. Oh, lovely. <laughs> oh, straight in the face. Just what you want, isn't it? <laughs> On your August trip to Port Aventura. No, it's a good splash battle this. I must say some of it's looking a bit worse for wear though, especially in the little village area down there. Like a lot of the uh, animation isn't working that much, you know, so yeah, shame about that. So the movement does really add to it, but it's mostly audio. I mean, there used to be a really nice soundtrack playing around here. It's just silent. At least you can hear the roars of the B&M coasters. But yeah, that's Angor. I mean, we make our way down there and back into the big temple, but it's a long ride. It's about an eight minute long experience, Angor. And this is what happens when you put a lot of effort in on Angor. Your gloves just rip like that. <laughs> but yeah, it was good fun that was. Had a nice cool down anyway. There's the temple, of course. That's the station area. And yeah, it's all about the theming around this area. Really like all the scenery. I'll take you for a little walk on that aerial pathway up there now. Because you get some stunning views across Angor. And of course, Shambhala as well. Oh, Shammy B. Look at it go. B&M beauty. A nice ride round there on Angor here at Port Aventura. Lovely on a nice hot day like this. And like I say, the views that you get from up here on this walkway are awesome. That's the thing that I'm really glad that Port Aventura did when they built this ride, was just putting in this walkway, to be honest, and all the theming around. Because yeah, as much as the splash battle is good fun on a hot day, for me, it's more about the area around it. I think it looks gorgeous, like all the little buildings down here. It's just a shame that the audio doesn't seem to be uh, turned on or working. I'm not too sure what the audio situation is, but notice it in a few areas here. And you know what I'm always like with audio, I ramble on about it enough in the vlogs, don't I? But honestly, music can really add to an experience. And yeah, it's a shame they've kind of lost the way a bit with that this time. The mighty Dragon Khan up there. Of course, I shared some nice POVs from those coasters yesterday. So check out that vlog if you've not already seen it. Don't think we're going to get any rain today though. It was a little bit rainy when I was on Dragon Calm. Yeah, I love all these views of Angor from up here at the top. And it was a good fun ride. Yeah, it's definitely worth getting on earlier in the day because it might get a bit busier later, but I'll be honest, I've never really seen it with a massive queue. All aboard the Port Aventura Railroad. So I thought I may as well have a ride round on the train. Because I absolutely love this attraction, and you know me, I love a good transport ride. Look at this beauty. You have only waited five minutes for it as well. The station down in Mediterranean gets really busy. Oh, love it. But yeah, this one down here in Sesamo Aventura had hardly anybody in the queue. So yeah, thought I may as well have a ride round on the train. Well, I must say, it's not very often you see something that says made in England on the side of it. Well, this train was, it was actually manufactured in 1994 in Stratford-upon-Avon, back in the UK, by Seven Lamb Limited. Let's go and get on. Here we go then, leaving Sesamo Aventura. A nice journey round on the Port Aventura Railroad. Now this ride has got a few different stops around the bar. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. Yeah, it's got a few stops around the park. However, everyone got off just at Sesamo Aventura. So I'm thinking maybe at the moment, because of the social distancing measures due to the pandemic, you can't stay on it all the way round and you can only go down one stop. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Of course, I don't know that for a fact. Maybe everybody could have just got off, but I highly doubt it. Oh, I love the pandas just there. Awesome views. But no matter 
know what, the next stop on this train is down in Far West. Part of the part that I've not really explored much. Yes, I went on Stampeder and Tomahawk yesterday. Really enjoyed getting back on those. Stampeder was running really well. But yeah, I've not really walked down past the saloon. I mean, there's no saloon show on at the moment. Like I say, entertainment offerings are limited. But you've got some really nice theming down there. The buildings, decor, and just the overall experience is really nice down in that part of the park. The train takes you underneath how they have loaders here. Another ride that I went on yesterday. Like I said, I covered all of the major rides really, other than water rides yesterday. Did the Seven Coasters and Hurricane Condor yesterday. Here we are arriving round into Far West. Always love a good train ride at a park. Nice little horse down there, Scarecrow. Here we are pulling in. Yeah, I'm not too sure what the situation is, like I say. Don't think we're allowed to stay on, but you've got to get off and go around, but let's see what happens. See, as expected really with the train, you do have to get off at each station. So yeah, there's three stations around. You've got the one in Mediterranean, Cesaro Aventura where I got on, and of course this one here in Far West as well. This is actually my favorite part of the route though now, that journey from Far West down to Mediterranean, the main entrance. So yeah, I'll put in some nice footage of this part of the route because there's some lovely views throughout the park. Love the big water wheel there. Here in Far West, of course, the Silver River Flume. Off to the left-hand side there, another view of El Diablo. Imagine camping out in there for the night. Be all right, wouldn't it? They should sell that as an exclusive experience. But in terms of hotels here at Port Aventura World, of course, they've got loads of accommodation here. And I've stayed in quite a few of them. I'm not staying on site this time, like I said in the travel vlog. I'm just in a cheap off-site hotel down in Salou. Why do this trip on quite a budget? But yeah, the on-site hotels here are fantastic. And in terms of express, you can pay for like an unlimited express for your stay, which is really good. And definitely worth it if you do want to make the most of this park. Because as much as I don't really promote fast track that much at the parks, this is one part where if you have it, it really does enhance your experience by a hell of a lot. But we'll see how I get on this afternoon. Love this view coming into China here. See, so yeah, we're kind of coming back down on a lower section of track to where it was before. And I come across this side of the train. That's the good thing at the moment. There's still only loading like one group per seat, if you like. Yeah, we'll go with seat. See, that means you can just move either side to get the awesome views. Like that. Oh, stunning.
leaving Far West then now and arriving back here in Mediterranean. Love all the rock work. And that view there is stunning, isn't it? Look at that. Gorgeous. And here we are pulling to the station. Like I say, I could get off here and go round again and just get to the back of the queue. Not like there is a queue at the moment, but there's not really loads to see on this part of the journey actually that runs from here down to Sesamo Aventura. It's mostly just through the trees of Polynesia. Now another little top tip for you if you come in here to Port Aventura World is try and eat early to avoid the crowds because some of the food outlets, the queues get rammed. As you can see, it's empty here at the moment. This costs just under 16 euros. Gone for a Fanta there, got a nice fries, chicken nuggets and a chocolate fudge cake as well. So yeah, I'm gonna tuck into this, it looks delicious. Oh, well that food was absolutely delicious. The chocolate fudge cake was amazing. I would definitely uh, recommend going there if you are coming here to Port Aventura. It's the Bora Bora restaurant down here in the Polynesian themed area. And so uh, yeah, normally you'd have the Polynesian show that takes place here just behind me. Lovely venue, uh, but like I say, shows are very limited here at this park. Really, there's only four shows in operation here at the moment. Uh, and some days, um, different shows aren't on and they can rotate around. So it's definitely worth downloading the Port Aventura Ventura app to get some details on that but yeah this venue is still really nice to come and see all the palm trees and yeah I do love it here underneath all of the palm trees in the Polynesian themed area it's also home to another water ride and that is Tatuki Splash so I'm gonna head round that way now it's time for a soak in well the main queue is advertised at one hour and ten minutes so that's a bit less than yesterday and it's also less than it was earlier on so you know what I'm gonna hold off on them express passes for now. I'm gonna go and join the main queue for Tatuki Splash and see just how long it takes for this fantastic water ride. It's got two drops on here, one small drop and then a double drop as well. So yeah, it's inside a big volcano. Looking forward to getting back on this. It's Tatuki Splash coming up next. I gotta say, pretty solid operations there on Tatuki Splash. Only waited 28 minutes to be precise. Not too bad at all. I'm glad I didn't buy that express pass now. Looking at the express queue, that also looks really long and it has done for quite a few of the attractions here. So it's definitely worth having a little look around first before jumping straight in with that. Lovely day though for a soak in. Is your chewing gum tunnel if you've never seen this before? It's always a highlight for Tukey Splash. Oh, I'm into one selfie. Here we go. Chewing gum tunnel, everybody. Literally, everyone just sticks the chewing gum up there onto the rock work. How nice. Just what you want to see, isn't it? When you come through on this lovely dark ride section. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a bit bumpy that was. Built by Intamin. It's one of the park originals, this. Selfie. Hey. Oh, wrong way. You turn it round, yeah, one of the park originals, making it 26 years old. Oh no, you're not doing a selfie, it's a POV, phone POV. Worth pointing out, you do actually need to bring your bags and all loose items onto this. Like quite a few of the rides here at Port Ventura, but with this, of course, it can be a soaker. So yeah, just be aware of that if you're bringing phones and stuff on. Because they might get wet. Well, they will get wet, it depends where you sat, I'm near the back, so it's not going to be too bad. Hands in the air like you just don't care. Oh no, back down again. Here we go. Suzuki oh. Splash. Top number one. Around the corner then now, and sometimes you get what I call a Suzuki wow. Special. I think we might just avoid it this time, but it's literally when you're just at the bottom of the lift hill here. And of course, it comes down the double drop there, and the wave comes straight over to this side and absolutely soaks you. But yeah, I think number six up there, that's the next ferret, I think. So I think we've avoided a Tatuki special. It's hilarious when it happens. Literally, you're right here about now. And of course, it comes down straight over to where we are. But yeah, it runs loads of boats, this does. So no wonder that it's got quite a good throughput. Operations, getting the boat sent out really frequently on this as well, which is always good. Yeah, no Tatuki special today. Comment down below if you've had one of those specials before though, where you're coming up the lift hill and then uh, you get soaked from the splash coming from the other drop. 
You'll see what I mean now, though, if I show you. There you go. Look at the lift hill and straight across. They used to have an awesome water effect here at the top. I mean, it's not worked for many years now, but yeah, it used to erupt like a volcano. And at night, all the lighting on there as well it used to be awesome. Here we go, building up a bit of speed. Really hope that I'm actually going to get wet here. Oh, POV again. Here we go. Oh, it's a selfie. Here we go. Whoa, whoa. Oh, well, that was just what I needed on a nice hot day like today. Riders absolutely loving it. Oh, brilliant. A Tuki Splash here at Port Aventura. Brilliant water ride. This park's got some awesome attractions, hasn't it? And the Tuki Splash really is one of them. Yeah, that was awesome. And under a 30 minute wait for it too on such a hot day. Can't complain about that. Um, got soaked on that last drop there. All the water just coming straight towards you. Absolutely brilliant, just what I needed. Sad thing is, I'm already starting to dry off again now, but I've got one more major water ride to get on later on. That's over in Far West and it's the Silver River Flumes. I'm looking forward to getting back on that. Up next though, I'm going to head into Sesamo Aventura and go and check out the dark ride. It was my first time getting on this last time I was here. It was a brand new ride a couple of years ago and yeah, it's really enjoyable. It's an interactive dark ride based on the Sesame Street characters and they did a really good job with that one. Oh, here they come again. Hey! <laughs> Love it. Oh, what a splash. Time to leave Polynesia then now, over the bridge just here and down to Sesamo Aventura. This area opened 10 years ago here at Port Aventura back in 2011. Of course, it's expanded over the years to include even more new attractions and Sesame Street Street Mission, which is the dark ride that's located down here at the back of the area. And yeah, this is one that's normally busy throughout the day. I mean, they've got all sorts of rides and attractions down here. Normally they have character meets and greets and shows, but they're not running at the moment. Anyway, in terms of the main shows, possibly some characters may come out every so often. I'm not too sure, but I do like these uh, fountains that they've got down here at the side, chasing along. That's like a little tractor ride there. Got the little drop towers, the ones where you pull yourself up. Magic Fish, that's another one of my favorites down here. So you've got some really nice attractions down here in this area of the park. And of course, the only dark ride here at Port Aventura, right down here at the back of the area. So that's where I'm gonna to head to next. Another good place actually to get some views of Shambhala and Dragon Khan and this side of the park. is from just at the top there on the giant tree as well. You can walk around the top. You don't need to cure or anything. Just walk around the top and get some awesome views. Or go on the plains just there as well. That's another nice family attraction down here at the park. Got some balloons out for the anniversary as well and some extra decoration. Lovely, really nice. Why well, doesn't feel too busy up here in the little plaza out the front of Street Mission? Advertise wait time of 50 minutes. So yeah, not too bad. I saw this on two hours yesterday. So I'm gonna go and join the queue now. This nice interactive dart ride, it's great this. Really nice attraction. So I've been waiting for 30 minutes so far for Sesame Street, Street Mission. Still not a big fan of how you have to repeat street twice in the name, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, just in the indoor part of the queue line now. Most of the queue is outside. Then you've got this little section where you've got all this theme in, and most importantly, some nice air conditioning because you really need it today. And there's also a couple of animatronics that come out over at the top there. So I'll get some footage of those if they come out. Worth pointing out as well, the plastic gloves are back for this one. Here we go, plastic gloves are required to ride this dark ride. Of course, because it's interactive, we're gonna be touching the guns. Let's go. So I waited 50 minutes in total, exactly what the advertised wait time was for Sesame Street Street Mission. Let's go and have a ride. Looking forward to this. Of course, we pick up our 3D glasses just over here. Got my gloves on ready. <laughs> and here we go, it's time to ride. Here we go. So you hear that noise, it's actually this what makes the noise. To shoot the cookies. Oh 
Play animatronics in here. Of course, it's a trackless ride system. Hey, big bird. Really good quality animatronic. Because of social distancing measures here in Spain, got the whole ride vehicle to myself. Nobody else on. Next, we will head into Hooper's store to investigate. I wouldn't mind eating a cookie that size. <laughs> There's a nice mix between screens and female. Clean my coat and check for please. It's making me hungry, I really want a cookie now. Oh no, you got all the smell pods in here as well. So it smells all soapy now. The guns are quite good on this though. Well, I say guns, they're not really guns, like these big long things, they look like hair straighteners. <laughs> Nice picture of my arm there. 21,600. Sesame Street Street Mission. Good little dark ride that. Well, let's say little, big dark ride. Bye, Big Bird. Oh, I'll tell you what, the heat really hits you when you come back out of a nicely air-conditioned show building. But no, that's a great ride. Like I say, it's been here for a couple of years at Port Aventura, and a really nice use of screens, the interactive elements, and some awesome animatronics in there, along with great theming throughout all of the scenes. I think it's a really nice ride, and it's something what this part needed drastically. Quite coaster-heavy and at least outdoor ride-heavy. So to have a nice dark ride like that here at Port Aventura really is great. And yeah, very much enjoyed it, just as much as last time I was here. I think that's a great family attraction, and there's something on there for everyone. I do really like as well how you've got the smells throughout. It really takes the experience to another level. But yeah, you just saw a full POV of it there. Really nice ride, Street Mission. One thing I don't like about it is the name, you know, just that Sesame Street Street Mission. I just think it's a bit too much of a mouthful to say. It should have been just like Sesame Street Mission, in my opinion. But uh, it is what it is. It's a great ride. Nice dark ride here at Port Aventura World. And yeah, waited uh, 50 minutes. Yeah, not 
not too bad at all. Managed to get quite a lot done today. It's only just gone 2.30 and yeah, I've got around the park really well in four and a half hours and done plenty of rides. I just had a nice little ride on Contiki, the little pirate ship here in Polynesia. And yeah, that was good, only waited five minutes for it. In terms of this area, you used to be known to an attraction called Sea Odyssey, located in a big show building just behind it. There's been quite a few things with this over the years. I mean, they've turned it into a scare attraction at one point. Along with that, they actually had like a dinosaur 4D film playing in here last time I was at this park. Now it's all closed up. So I'd love to know down below in the video comments, what would you love to see Port Aventura do with this space? I'm gonna put it out there. I think an indoor family coaster would be great. Bear in mind, there's quite a large show building hidden behind all these trees. I think it'd be a great addition to this park, but comment down below and let me know your thoughts. What would you like to see done with the old Sea Odyssey building? Having a really good second day so far here at Port Aventura. Nice to get back on a variety of different attractions here at the park. I'm now down in what is my favorite themed area, Far West, where it's time to do a couple of flat rides. So there's loads of flats here at the park to enjoy. Gonna start off with a ride on this nice break dance. Walk on cue, I'll be on the next cycle. It's 24 crazy barrels. And right next door, bit of a theme park worldwide favorite here at this park, the mighty buffaloes and awesome dodgems with no rules at all. Do what you want, go which way you want, bash into who you want. It's great fun. Here we go there on 24 crazy barrels. All these barrels are crazy. I think the attraction's actually officially changed name now to this Crazy Barrels. It always used to be known as cra 24 Crazy Barrels. <laughs> I'll stop saying Crazy Barrels now. Well, it's really starting to show its age, that one. Very short cycle. And yeah, it just felt like it was struggling. But uh, look at the sign, still 24 crazy barrels. Not too sure why though, because there's certainly not 24 gondolas. <laughs> I love all the theming though throughout this area. And this is the way to the wild buffaloes. Looking forward to this, absolutely awesome. Of course, if you haven't guessed already, you sit in a buffalo. Let's go on.
Well, as you saw there from the on-ride footage, the buffaloes are absolutely crazy. You can pretty much do anything on there. You can even go backwards if you want to on those things. No rules apply on the buffaloes here in Far West. This area of the park is beautiful. Love the water wheel just over there. The views of Silver River Flume, of course, the log flume ride. I'm gonna be going on shortly. And yeah, it's just stunning round here. Thought I'd show you some of the really nice 25th anniversary decorations here on the bridge as well. So as you can see, they've got them all along the bridge and also the building over at that side as well. They've done a really nice job with all the decorations here. They really do know how to celebrate here at Port Aventura. And Halloween is always a great time to come here. Love to come back for Halloween. It won't be this year, um, because of course I've come now instead of at Halloween. And also I'd rather wait until things are gonna be a bit more back to normal before doing Halloween again here. But yeah, absolutely love the buildings in this part of the park. That's a restaurant there, the Iron Horse. Absolutely spectacular, it really is. And this is the entrance to Silver River. I'm gonna join the queue shortly. Well first, just gonna have a little walk down here and just see some of the theming because I love this part of the park. I love all the rosettes that they've put up for the 25th anniversary celebrations. Yeah, they're really nice. Over on the left there, you've got the Long Branch Saloon, all closed up at the moment because normally they do have a fantastic saloon show in there. Brilliant show with loads of singing and comedy and lots of other funny moments, sometimes even illusionists in there. So yeah, it's a really good venue. Closed at the moment because it is quite small and with social distancing it wouldn't really work very well in there at all, sadly. But yeah, this part of the park is fantastic. You walk through all the details and buildings. The far west is huge. It's by far the biggest area here at Port Aventura World. Bang Bang West is on though, the outdoor stunt show. So I'm gonna be catching that later. It's on at four, six and nine. So yeah, definitely gonna be um, heading in there later on for the stunt show. Carry on having a little stroll down this way. The old steakhouse just over there. That's a nice venue. Definitely recommend that for food. Very good over there. And all of these buildings here are fantastic. Really nice to see all the decorations up for the anniversary. Really glad they've kept them up for this year. And also, the themed audio is all playing around here. Lots of country and western music. So yeah, I'm really pleased about that because audio plays such a big part in the themed experience, especially here at Port Aventura. So it's really nice how it's playing around here because that's been such a big issue for me this trip. I love the immersion and themed areas and unfortunately they've just really lacked on that this time when it comes to audio there's clearly been some sort of audio issues going on or just broken speakers i'm not too sure but i know it's your average day guest most people aren't going to be bothered but for me coming to somewhere like this it is a themed experience so yeah i do really like all the audio really does uh, make it for me got a nice carousel down here as well love the carousel Sit on all the different horses, bulls, whatever takes your fancy. Back down here at Stampede now, of course. I went on that yesterday in the day one vlog. So check it out if you've not already seen that. Hotel Gold River entrance just over there. That's also the way through to Mansion de Lucy and Colorado Creek. So yeah, it's got an entrance directly into the park. So has Hotel Port Aventura. That's also got an entrance into the park. That's located down right by the main entrance of course, so you come straight in there. And then yeah, you've got El Paso and Hotel Caribe, they're a little bit further. No entrance into the park from those. But yeah, there's a short walk away here at the resort. Silver River Flume. Great log flume this is. Got a boat to myself because of social distancing. And I waited just over an hour for this ride. Quite a slow mover, lots of express coming in. I'd say maybe 70% express, 30% main. Similar to last night really on Furious Baco. Yeah, it's a great ride this. Get a bit of interaction with El Diablo. Of course, that's located over in the Mexico themed area, but because of the location of this ride next to it, get a bit of interaction between the two. Yeah, there's been a bit of tree chopping done around here since uh, last time I was here at this park. 
Oh, yeah, better stop start on here because of how many boats it is. Do a better stop start. You just spread the boats out. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Small drop first. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Already, look at it. I'm sat in the front because I'm absolutely baking hot. I have to stand in that queue, so I'm hoping for a nice big wave to come over. Normally does on this, it's a good one. Get any interaction? Hello, hola, hola, yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah, coming down to the evening now here at Port Aventura. Doing a nice variety of attractions today, which has been really good. Very much enjoyed it. Can't wait to get back on Shambhala though. Whee! Now, of course, I'm going to be filming a vlog tomorrow from Ferrari Lands, the second gate park here. Now, if you've seen that park before or visited yourself, you'll know how it's a very small park. So I'm only intending to do half a day there. But I'm going to be coming back into Port Aventura for half a day, into the main park. Not doing a vlog, we're just going to literally hammer Shambhala and get some more rides on there. Guys, really soft start today. That is the plan. Can we get any old eyes, do you reckon? All out. Nothing. <laughs> they got the ponchos on. Why do you need a poncho on? Why, honestly? It's baking hot, it's 30 degrees Celsius. I don't think you need a poncho on, guys. Nice view down there. Awesome view of Shambhala over there. <laughs> I like how it said that on the advert when it opened. It's like, live the Shambhala experience in Port Aventura. So you have two small drops and a pretty large drop on this ride. They're enjoying the experience in front, just nice and chilled out. Nice slow ride. Looking at Hurricane Condor there thinking, oh, I wouldn't go on that. <laughs> of course, I had a great ride on there on sit down yesterday. Hopefully I'll get a stand up at some point. Probably won't do it today, but maybe tomorrow. And here we go, drop number two on the Silver River. Oh, Woo. <laughs> Oh, that can be a soaker depending on how many you have in the boat. That was all right, that. Round to the main drop now. What I really like with the design of this log plume is how you come around this section now with quite some speed. It builds up the anticipation. Oh, that. <laughs> Love it. Uh, there you go. So, yeah, you see the big drop there and you think, oh, we're going down that in a minute. So, it sends you out this way and round. And then you look at that, it's a huge drop. Hey! Woo! Hold up. <laughs> That's a nice piece of track that runs underneath the drop just there, isn't it? Love that. Oh, God, it's so jolty. Oh, stop and stop. I mean, I'd say it needs to run less boats, but. I'm not too sure with that. Not many, how many express they're uh, letting in. I think running that amount of boats is, uh, yeah, is needed to be honest. Oh, God, it proper jolts you when the conveyor starts. I'm bracing myself. I think it's going to stop again. Don't mind though, because we've got a chamois view. Oh, <laughs> so stop start, isn't it? Oh, spread them boats out, and here we go. Hola, hola. <laughs> Wouldn't be a Port Aventura vlog without some interactions, would it? But it's all about. Not had loads of queue jumping this trip, which has been good. Not as much as usual, I think, because of the social distancing and how the queues are spread out more. It's putting people off. Hey, hola! <laughs> They're loving it. See the sounds back on YouTube. Yeah, there's a view of Ferrari Land, Red Force. Looking forward to getting on there tomorrow. Here we go. Time for a soaking out on the big drop. Brace yourselves. Woo! <laughs> Lovely, oh, it wasn't too bad. I think because I'm the only person in the boat, it didn't get me that much. But you know what, just a light sprinkle, nice splash. It's cool me down a bit, that has for the evening. It's always great to get back on the Silver River Flume here in Far West. Great log flume, wish it had a bit more theming around it. Some nice hashtag rock work would be nice, uh, but it's still a great ride. At least with that one, I could go in a boat on my own. The other day at Tibidabo, because of balancing the boat out and the weight issues, I actually had to sit with some other people, but normally that'd be fine. <laughs> However, I actually had to sit right in the middle of them. It was a couple as well, and I was sat right in the middle. It was a bit awkward, so check out the vlog from Tibidabo in Barcelona if you haven't already seen it. Just seeing 
seeing that Shambhala is actually only advertised on a one hour queue. So I'm gonna head up towards China and go and see if that's the case. Considering there's still a couple of hours to go until this part of the park closes at 8 p.m., Mexico is pretty quiet. And just looking at the queue board over here, some rides, the queues have really started to quieten down a bit now. Shambhala, one hour, 10 minutes. Dragon Khan, 50. Furious Baco, an hour and a half. What do you expect from Baco? 40 minutes for Stampeda, half an hour for Condor. Not too bad. This one's quite funny though. An hour for Angle, the splash battle. So glad I went there when I did. Here's me saying I've never seen it with a queue. Something I just want to talk about though is Templo del Fuego. Mentioned Sea Odyssey earlier on and that building. Well, Templo del Fuego was an attraction that was very close to my heart. And we've had quite a few comments on social media about, is it open? It normally is at this time of year. However, it's not been open for a couple of years now. Um, basically, it's a walkthrough with a big fire and water finale that is pretty spectacular. So I don't know what the future is for this attraction. Obviously, the signage is still out here in the Mexican themed area. And uh, yeah, all we've got is a closed sign. So let's see what happens with this in the future. But I really want to see this back open because it really is a fantastic attraction. Honestly, if you love big coasters, this is a part that you've just got to come to. And just to come and see this skyline, and of course get on these two epic coasters. A B&M classic and a more modern coaster. That is absolutely awesome. Both of them there together going up the lift hill. It's great when you get that interaction between the two of them, it really is. Anyway, I'm gonna go and join the queue then for Shambhala this evening. We're gonna have a nice ride on the parks. B&M Hypercoaster, can't believe it's gonna be 10 years old next year. Makes me feel old, I'm 28 now. I remember coming out here when, like, when I was 18 and thinking, oh God, they're gonna be having this big coaster. Crazy, like honestly, it's amazing. But here we go, let's go and ride Shambhala. It always looks nice this though, doesn't it? All the trees, the Great Wall of China. And yeah, I reckon the queue time is gonna be pretty accurate because it really seems to have filtered out like this evening for just for six o'clock. Like, yeah, the pathways are pretty quiet, especially compared to yesterday. Right, let's go and live the Shambhala experience. waiting for exactly one hour to ride Shambhala. Of course, the advertised wait time was an hour and 10 minutes. And yeah, nearly there now. Just gonna go straight down this way, across the bridge, and of course over to the station building. Love the theme station for this ride. It's a shame that a lot of the theming does get defaced over here with graffiti. People writing the names in it. It's such a shame about that. We're well, looking forward to getting back on this absolutely spectacular coaster, one of my all-time favorites. It's gonna cross the bridge, I reckon another five, 10 minutes maximum. And be on Shambhala. I'll see you on the ride, let's go. August 2021. Port of Ventura in Spain. The sun's starting to go down. One hour and 10 minutes later, I'm on Shambhala and the good thing is, I'm at the back, I'm on the back car, on the inner seat. So not the direct back row, but this will do for me. Of course, it's assigned seating at the moment, but I did say to the member of staff, please let me go near the back. And he did let me, which is really kind of him. We're about to drop on Shambhala, here we go. What a view, what an experience, here we go.
fantastic ride. Honestly, one of the best coasters in the world, that. I still absolutely love it, nine years later, and it still blows me away. What a coaster. Oh, another absolutely excellent ride there on Shambhala. Honestly, that coaster really is something special, and it means the world to me, so it's great to get back on it here at Port Aventura. Anyway, I'm going to make my way over to Far West again now, and fingers crossed going to get in for Bang Bang West, which is the Wild West stunt show over there, so hopefully going to be able to get in. There's an hour until it starts, so I should do if I make my way straight over there now. Here I am then at the Western stunt show, known as Bang Bang West. So yeah, looking forward to seeing this. My second show of the trip here at Port Aventura. Like I say, there's normally a lot more shows and entertainment throughout the park, but due to COVID, so much of that has gone, unfortunately. But fingers crossed, as soon as they get the opportunity to, there'll be more shows and entertainment back here at the park. But yeah, we'll just have to see if we get in with this one, because I'm actually here 40 minutes before the show starts, and it's already very busy. In fact, a lot of people have already gone in, so we'll see what happens. Seems to be a bit of a hold. Fingers crossed it's not full. I mean, it is quite a large venue, but you have got to think with social distancing measures, maybe it's already full. I'm not too sure. We'll find out. Well, I've made it into the venue. Nicely seated just in here. And here's a look at the social distancing measures in place in here, just to give you a bit of an idea on what it's like for if you are coming out here. Literally just leave in two seats in between parties. But yeah, over the next few minutes, I'll put in some highlights from Bang Bang West 2021 here at Port Aventura World. Here we go, we've got a bit of crowd participation going on now. Hooray! <laughs> oh, we're sending it back. Hooray! <laughs> Love it, that's the good thing about the parks in Spain. People are always up for a good laugh. Whether it's chanting or doing waves like that. Love it. there from Bang Bang West. It's a 25 minute show featuring a few different stunts, special effects and quite a lot of funny moments as you saw from some of the footage. Um, yeah, There's lots of different moments where they kind of go off the Wild West theme and do this weird funny stuff like with the foam machine that you saw. Completely random. Um, I used to prefer it how it used to be back in the day. I mean they used to do like uh, proper horse stunts in there and much bigger stunts than they do now. Um, but yeah it was okay. It's nothing spectacular in my opinion. It's a family show um, but I wanted to come and see it just 
just to see what it's like and of course give you a mini review on it. If you are going to see one show though whilst you're here at Port Aventura, it's got to be the huge show that I saw yesterday over in the main theatre in China. It was absolutely spectacular. Anyway, like I say, in terms of the staggered closing times here at the park, um, the only areas now that are officially open are Far West and also Mediterranea because the rest of the park closes from 8 o'clock. Um, over in China at Dragon Khan and Shambhala, they remain open until 9. Um, but yeah, it's very weird how they're doing this staggered kind of closing time thing at the moment. So we're going to have a bit of a walk around and see some of the park in the dark because Port Aventura has got some lovely permanent lighting throughout the park. Oh, I wouldn't be a trip to Port Aventura without coming to see Voltrix. This is a little show down here every 15 minutes here in Far West. How are you doing? You're right there. <laughs> At night as well, you get to see his nice little disco lighting. Reminds me of the days when I used to do a bit of DJing. <laughs> Well, I've got to say, this is quite an eerie experience. I'm just walking back here through Mexico down towards China. And yeah, here's a look at Hurricane Condor all lit up at night. But yeah, there's no audio on around here. It's all very peaceful and there's nobody about at all. Because of course, this section of the park closed from eight o'clock. But yeah, just thought I'd show you the awesome lighting package up there on Hurricane Condor. What a great ride. Oh, well, I couldn't get any further than just past Hurricane Condor because yeah, they were sending people back this way in terms of exiting the park, because you've got to think that area of the park's closed now. So yeah, they're sending people down here through Far West that of course is still alive and very busy. I really hope that the standard opening hours resume again soon here at this park, because I think they definitely need to. I mean, the crowds have been very heavy these past couple of days, and as much as today has been a lot quieter than yesterday, there's still a lot of demand to have this park open later, so I do feel like really it'd spread the crowds out more as well, keeping things open later. I mean, I don't really get it. It doesn't really make that much sense from a COVID point of view, because of course they're now putting everybody in two areas of the park when it's still pretty busy instead of spreading everybody out. Um, it seems to me like it's more of a cost-saving money matter. Um, so I really hope that's something that changes soon here at Port Aventura because the late nights are always something that really make this park along with more entertainment as well. So I hope that that can resume soon too. Back down here then in Mediterranean, of course the entrance area to Port Aventura Park. It always looks great at night down here though with all the lighting and even more special with all the 25th anniversary decorations up. It feels really weird actually coming to this park and not ending it with the parade here or the nighttime show. But like I say, just I really hope that the entertainment offerings resume to normal again soon. It's probably going to be 2022 at the earliest, but I really hope so because gathering down here at the end of the night and watching a parade and of course the fantastic late show Fiesta Ventura really does add to the experience. So fingers crossed that can come back again soon. The good thing is though, the atmosphere is still really nice around this area at night. All the little restaurants, and planting and it all just comes together it's lovely I really do like this part of the park I like every part of Port Aventura I think all of the areas are fantastic and it's a beautiful park to come to it's just a shame that the operations are not a bit more on point well there might be no big lake show at the moment here at Port Aventura but they are still running the fountain show every so often in the evening I mean it's not advertised but it's 10 o'clock now and this is running so I think it might be every 15 minutes or so um, from when I was here last night in the Furious Backhoe queue. But yeah, really nice just to see that they're running the fountains and they've actually put these new fountains in since last time I was here. The circular ones at the bottom to go along with the bigger ones down there at the back. But yeah, it's really nice to see that they're running this. Again, it just needs the audio sorting out because there is music on, but it's just so quiet. So hopefully they can get the audio issues sorted again soon.
Well, the audio seems to be a lot louder around at this side of the Mediterranean Lagoon. And what a way to wrap up my day two vlog here from Port Aventura World. I've had a great couple of days inside Port Aventura Park. It was nice today to do a good variety of different rides, including all of the four major water rides here at the park. Uh, getting on the dark ride, of course, Sesame Street Street Mission. That name still gets to me every time. Along with that as well, seeing Bang Bang West, uh, doing some flat rides and just walking through all the different areas at this park. It really has been fantastic to get back here to Port Aventura Park. Now in terms of my general thoughts from the past couple of days, of course Port Aventura is very different at the moment because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm just so grateful to get out here and come and experience it to be honest. I've been really lucky to be able to travel again and coming to this park has been fantastic. Is it the same experience that we all know and love? Uh, no it's not in terms of the overall package. Like I say, missing things like the big nighttime show, the parade, just more entertainment around the park, the later opening hours. You know, things are still very different here. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the staggered opening and closing times, I'll be honest. However, um, at the end of the day, the park's open, people are here enjoying themselves. I've been able to come and I really appreciate that. I just hope things return to some normality soon. Something that I have been a little bit disappointed by though is of course the express pass situation. By all means, it's always been pretty bad here in terms of the really wanting to pay extra for that express. Um, however, you know, seeing like Furious Backo last night and even on rides like Silver River Flume today, I'd say it's probably been 70% um, of express pass and 30% from the main queue, which, you know, is quite sad because in terms of an operation like that, I've never seen that before at a park. Um, and I've traveled to parks all around the world and for here, they're the worst for it in terms of that. Don't get me wrong, it can be great sometimes to have um, a fast pass service available for those people uh, that can't visit parks regularly. I understand that. However, I still feel like parks like Europa Park are better with their systems in terms of um, there's no fast track, everyone's on the same class, the same level, and then it makes the main queues move so much quicker. Port Aventura aren't gonna change that anytime soon because it makes them so much money here. It's just a shame about the experience for those that don't wanna pay extra or haven't got the money to pay extra. Everybody that comes here should have the same level of experience in my opinion, and it's a shame that you do have to pay extra for that, um, for that to have a, a reasonable day in terms of getting loads of rides done. I've got around really well the past two days. I've not had to buy express passes. I possibly will do tomorrow because it's my last day in the parks. Um, I'm heading to Ferrari Land first and that'll be the next vlog coming up on this channel. And of course, from Ferrari Land, I might just pay for the express passes to get things done in there. Uh, but I'll see how the queues go. Um, along with that, I'm then coming into Port Ventura Park. I wanna get some re-rides done. I may possibly buy the express. Coming to this park, you know, it's pretty much one of the many places where I say to you, you know, you might have to get it. I don't, you know, normally condone express passes at all, but it's a part where it does drastically improve your experience. Um, but I'll leave that, it's entirely up to you. You've seen what I've done the past two days without express. Um, if you wanna go for it, then of course you'll get even more done coming here to the park. But yes, next vlog coming up is from Ferrari Land. Um, just wanna say it's been really nice seeing the 25th celebrations here as well. The decorations throughout the park have been great. And overall, um, take Express out of it. Operations have been pretty solid, to be honest. Um, you know, Shambhala, Dragon Khan, three trains, Furious Backo on two, getting the trains and boats, whatever it is sent out there on the different rides, which has been fantastic. And uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Ferrari Line coming up tomorrow, followed by a visit to Caribbean Aquatic Park. I've not been there for many years, so I'm looking forward to sharing that here on Theme Park Worldwide. I'm gonna chill out here for a couple of minutes, watch the fountains, and thank you very much for joining me in my day two vlog here from Port Aventura World. Great to get back on Chamois B as well, wasn't it? Absolutely loved it. Thank you very much for watching, and that leaves me with one final thing to say. Get out there and keep on riding. See you in Ferrari lands.